The command palette within Sublime Text is a fuzzy searchable list of commands that allows you to easily execute things. This is great for commands you don't frequently use or commands which don't have keys bound to them, allowing you to easily execute them. And also it's a good way to look up the key bindings for commands that you do use if you happen to forget what they are. Unfortunately, not all commands will appear in the command palette by default. However, if you like, you can add any command that you want to be there, including commands that you have come up with yourself. And today, I'm going to show you how to do that. Hello fellow Sublime Text Fanatics, Odan Nerd and welcome to this week's video where we're talking all about the command palette and in particular how you might add commands to it. Because if you're familiar with the command palette you know that it's a list of commands that you can summon via a menu command or a key binding that will allow you to fuzzy search and find exactly the command that you might like. And the command palette also makes sure that it doesn't show you commands that don't apply in the current situation so you can only find things that you can do right now. Now, unfortunately, not all commands in Sublime Text appear in the command palette. They don't appear there by default. Something needs to add them. And even in the commands that come with Sublime Text by default, not all commands that it ships with are applied inside of the command palette. So what do you do if you'd like to add some of those commands? Or maybe you even want to add commands of your own choosing. Now, why would we want to do that? Because you generally want to use key bindings for commands that you use on a frequent basis, the fastest way to execute things without having to take your hand off of the keyboard. But you don't use some commands frequently enough to either want to devote a key binding to them or remember what it is if you, if you don't use it frequently enough. But the command palette, though, that's easy to pull up with a single key binding that you're probably going to remember because you use it fairly frequently, and you can easily search and find the command that you want to execute. Plus, the command palette will also show you keys bound to commands if there is one, which is a great way to look this up and remind yourself as well, quickly and easily. And adding this is very easy to do as well. All we need is a Sublime Commands file. Now, if you ever need to be reminded what the structure of this file looks like, you can easily determine that from directly within Sublime by using the view package file command from the command palette and using a filter of Sublime dash commands. That'll show you all of the files that are concurrently contributing commands to the command palette. The file at the very top of the list here, default slash default dot Sublime dash commands, that's the file that provides the default command palette entries. So if we were to look into that, we can actually look at the contents of this type of file. And we can see that this is a JSON file. Unsurprisingly, many of the files that ship with Sublime text that augment are JSON files. If we look at the very first character on the very first line, this is an open square bracket that tells us that this is a list of items, which makes sense because there are multiple commands inside of the command palette. Each one of the entries in this file is a JSON object that contains at least two, possibly three keys. Every object here, as we can see, needs to have a caption key, which specifies the text that appears directly inside of the command palette, how you find the command. Command key tells it what command should actually be executed. And for any command that actually requires arguments of some sort, there would be an args key as well. Not all commands need arguments. Not all commands have that particular key. But that is all you need to create a file just like this. So if we wanted to, we could easily add commands to the command palette by just creating a sublime commands file in our user package. Now, commonly, you might see a file name of default.sublime-commands being used for this. And while that is very common, it's not strictly necessary. The file name doesn't matter. All that matters is that the extension tell Sublime what type of file this actually is. This may surprise you because when you're editing your preferences or your key bindings, the file name that you have to create in your user package has to have a very specific name. Not so here, the world is your oyster. So if you want, you can name this file anything you like, and that might make it handy for you to remember what it is that it's actively contributing for you. So let's create a file of this type. And to do that, we can just create a brand new file. I'm going to add the open and close square brackets in here. That's going to contain the entire content of the file. That way we won't forget about it. I'm going to save it. Save it inside of your user package. And it can be anywhere at all you like inside of the package. As we said, the name can be absolutely anything you like. Just make sure it has the sublime dash commands extension or sublime's not going to know it's supposed to pay attention to it. And now we're going to be good to go. Now, be personally, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close this file and reopen it because I use the package dev package that's going to allow us to have more functionality when we're editing this. If you're unfamiliar with this package, there's a link to it down in the description. We've talked about it previously on the channel and everything we're doing here will work without it. So don't worry about that. You don't need it. But now we're ready to add as many commands as we like. And in this example, I'm going to add an entry for the prompt select workspace command, which is from the project menu. So we're going to use a caption here as well that aligns with where you might find this in the menu. This is not strictly necessary, but this is how Sublime tends to do this and how other packages do it makes things easier to find this way. And once this is all set up, all we have to do is save this file. Now, if we were to open the command palette and do a little bit of a search, we can find this command here. And you'll notice that it even tells us that there's a key bound to this and what that key actually is. 
Now, any command that has a key bound to it that appears also in the command palette will show that key inside of its command palette entry, just as we saw here. And in order for this to work, all that's required is that the command palette entry have a command and a set of arguments that exactly matches that which is defined by a key binding somewhere. It could be any sort of key binding, including a default key binding. So what that means is that you can also add commands to the command palette, even if you normally have keys bound to them. This will help you find those keys. Now, in this particular case, Case, I'm showing a key binding here. If you were to do this on your Windows machine, you wouldn't see a key binding here, and that's because I added a key binding for this myself. I use Sublime Text over Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. The other two operating systems have a default key binding for this. On Windows, it doesn't, so I added this to make sure that I can easily use it. And how did I know how to do that? You may be asking, how do you know what command to use if you don't have a key binding for it already? We can get Sublime to tell us any command or argument that we like, so long as there's another way for us to execute that particular command. To do this, use the View Show Console uh, menu entry or use the associated key binding that you'll see there to open the Sublime Text Console at the bottom of the window. Enter sublime.log commands just like this and hit enter. On Sublime Text 4, this will toggle logging on and off each time that you execute it. If you're on Sublime Text 3, include the text true or false. First character has to be uppercase in order to turn logging on and off on that platform. But once logging is turned on, do anything that will execute a command, menu entry, command palette entry, key binding, and and it will log what the command actually is. So now that logging is turned on, we go into the menu. We choose the command from the project menu that associates with what we want to add here. Now I can go ahead and just close this. If we go back and look inside of the console, we can see the command that was logged. It tells us the commands that were logged for any commands that take arguments. It even gives us the argument dict that rec represents the commands that were actually executed. And with this, you can easily find any command that you might want to bind to a key if you're binding keys or add to the command palette as we're doing here. Now this can be a great productivity boost for you if you ever find yourself hunting around in the menus to find a command that you don't use very frequently. One thing you can do is check the command palette to see if it's there, and if not, you can add it to make your life that much easier. If you happen to have your own commands that you use, uh, like say for example using the chain command as we talked about in the previous video, you might want to add something like that to the command palette as well. This could be potentially a real boon to your usage of Sublime Text. If it is, please let me know down in the comments section below. While you're heading down there, use the button to thumbs subscribe and share as you deem appropriate. And that's going to be it for this particular video. And until the next one, this is Odatner asking you to please have... A sublime day.